Thank you to Simon, first of all. Um, I'm Jennifer Eastman from Eastside Energy, and thanks for coming along today. Um, I'm here really just to talk about how you can successfully use the information from your energy management system to start to make a real difference in your organisations. I'm sure a lot of you have already started doing this, um, but here's a kind of a few more examples to hopefully share a bit of information. So a quick background, as I'm sure you're all aware, the complexities of energy monitoring to continue to spiral out of control. As companies become more global, you have to take into account locations across the world, different languages, different currencies, um, different regulations, which continue to increase not only in our country, but also everywhere else across Europe and beyond, and other external factors as well. There's another issue as well you're probably having to take into account, which is the issue of multiple meter reading methods. Feeding those all into one place really does give you a load of information and a load of things you need to generate from that. And the idea behind your energy management system really is to try and bring all that into one central area for you to do it effectively. So how can it help? Well, first of all, and most importantly, I think you'll agree, is to save energy and money. Um, really, that's what we're doing it for, and the ways in which we do that can vary. But it might be identifying anomalies in energy usage, benchmarking your buildings and sites either within your organisation, with other organisations, or against government benchmarks. Um, you can then do a number of financial things, such as ensuring that your supplier invoices are correct by comparing it with your own consumption data you're um, recording. Um, you can then take some of that data and it can help you to procure a really good energy contract for single sites, multiple sites, the entire organisation. Um, and then right down to um, doing sort of um, very simple things on site. If you've got a multi-tenanted building, you might be able to use that data to build them quite effectively. Um, another thing I wanted to look at is how you can use it to raise awareness of energy management, both within your organisation, but also to the public to really sort of start to get some momentum behind your corporate social responsibility policy. So, moving on, <laughs> we are just going to have a look here at the cycle, which hopefully is a continuous one that you're, you're all kind of continuing round and round. Um, really, the, the whole process of AMT is to start with the monitoring. What you then will probably be doing as the professionals in this area is making adjustments and improvements to make a real difference to your energy consumption in your organisation. The reason for the superhero picture is that the AMT system can really help to identify how those changes you're making on site are actually making a difference to the organisation's bottom line. So hopefully the idea is then you become an energy superhero within your organisation. That can help you to get buy-in for future investment projects that you're looking to do and really prove the ROI on anything you're doing. Um, the picture of the bunch of people on the right-hand side there is to represent how am and can also help to um, get everyone in your organisation involved in energy reduction. Um, and that's not only within your organisation, but also externally too. So where is um, energy management used? As I'm sure you're all aware, pretty much every sector it's applicable to. And eSight is specifically used in a number of these. We've obviously got Keith here to talk about a pharma example in a, in a few minutes. Um, but it's used across universities and colleges, small sites, all the way up to large manufacturers who are using it for really production-specific stuff. So moving on, what I wanted to do is take you through a few fairly simple case studies just to show you some examples of people who have um, been using AMT to make a real difference on site. And our first one here comes from Carlsberg. They were actually hoping to come and present today but couldn't make it. So um, they wanted me to present to you really their findings of what they've done. The lead site alone produces 450 million pints of beer every year, so their water consumption is 900,000 cubic metres, um, and their energy usage there is 28 million kilowatt hours, of which about a seventh they managed to recover through a vapour heat exchanger. Um, so massive, massive energy consumption, and what they wanted to do with AMT is not only reduce that, but also to improve that heat recovery process they were using. So the first graph we look at here from their energy management system is looking at exactly that process. The red line there shows the number of brews they were managing to create, and the bar chart shows the amount of hot water they recovered per brew. You can very clearly see from the majority of the graph that's working quite nicely. They're um, managing to recover a fair amount of hot water per brew on a fairly consistent basis. Um, towards the right-hand side of the graph, you can see everything's become a little bit skewed and those data points have moved apart. They were very quickly able to see that the process had stopped working. And the reason they managed to achieve that is because they're using hourly updating dashboards at the operator level to instantly identify those sorts of problems. What they would also use are email alarms that are generated automatically, sent straight to the person who can head down to the production floor and work out what's gone wrong. So that's kind of just one area of how they were using the AMT system to sort of um, really work on the production floor and make sure it was operating efficiently. 
By doing that, they've achieved a number of things. Overall, they've reduced energy consumption by 10%. The kilowatt hours per hectolitre of beer produced um, has reduced by 14% and their site water consumption is also down 10%. As a result of that, their effluent cost is also down 16%. Um, and the graph we've taken from their system there shows the five-year total site energy in kilowatt hours per hectolitre of product. Um, and the one uh, bar that you can barely see is 2009, which is where they actually really started to make a change with their AMT system. Um, so dramatic changes there from a nice manufacturing example. Our next example comes from Enica. Um, they're an energy consultant working in the UK. Um, they've been working with AMT and their clients to, to look at consumption against driving factors so they can actually look at efficiency for them. So if we just run through a bit of a background example, say we're looking at my fuel consumption. Um, last year I managed, last month, sorry, I managed to consume 20 gallons of fuel. That would be my consumption data. But I managed to drive 1,000 miles, which is my production from that. So we can very quickly work out what my performance was, which in this case is 50 miles per gallon. Say this month, my consumption doubled to 40 gallons, but I actually drove 2,500 miles. My performance then has actually improved at 62.5 miles per gallon. So instantly looking at the figures, you might see, hey, my consumption's doubled, I've obviously been bad, but actually when we look at an efficiency, we can see I've made an improvement. So metering alone can only provide you that consumption data, which is vital, but you need an AMT system to be able to compare that against a driving factor so that you can look at efficiency more effectively. But what might we do next? Say I can see that my efficiency has improved, how do I know if that's good or bad? Well, this is where the benchmarking thing comes in. Either against your own sites or against government targets, you can use that data to really look at what your performance deficit might have been, or even you might have been overperforming, and that's a great thing to shout to your organisation about. So I can very simply then look at the costs that I might have been able to save if I had been operating at a benchmark level. So an example of how Enica have used this, um, this actually comes from a steel manufacturing site in Wales, and here they've been comparing gas consumption against temperature. Um, if the gas boilers were firing correctly, those data points should obviously all be very nicely correlated along that green line of best fit. Um, now what Enica have been doing is working with their clients to set a target line slowly, slightly below that to bring everything sort of um, down a little bit. As organisations grow or energy managers change or departments change, things can very quickly spiral out of control and by setting those targets and continually updating your information you can see how you're making improvements. Another example from Enica here comes from a school. Um, they were brought in to have a look here at their gas consumption on a daily basis. Um, and they very quickly highlighted a boiler control issue. What was happening here um, is the school was set to open at 8 o'clock. But what they, the school um, facilities manager had done is set up the boiler to be at temperature by 6 a.m., even though no one was due in the building for a good couple of hours. They'd also set that at 23 degrees. Enica went in, they could see that the boilers were firing at 3 a.m. in order to achieve that temperature by 6. The temperature was also probably a little bit too high and they were able to make some changes for the school. So the first thing they did, they utilised the optimizer that was actually already available on this boiler um, to be able to get it to look at the external temperature and fire the boilers up at the right time to reach the temperature for 8 o'clock. No sooner, no later. If it was particularly cold, it would fire a little bit earlier. If it was a bit of a warmer day, it would fire a little bit later. And so by making no investment at all, they managed to achieve savings of over £3,000. It was just all about getting the school to utilise the technology they already had. The final example from Enica comes from a college. Um, here they were looking at base load consumption. They defined the active periods of the building in blue there and the inactive periods in red. They looked at the inactive periods when no one was on site and thought that looked exceptionally high as an overall proportion of their consumption. Um, their first thought was it's got to be a water leak. It looks fairly consistent. So what did they do? They brought engineers on site, detected this water leak, instantly reduced their water consumption by fixing it, saving £15,000 a year. And that's exactly the kind of issue you might not be able to pick out without an AMT system and someone knowledgeable actually utilising it. Our next example comes from Greece. Um, Build It here, we're working with the Metropolitan Hospital, which... Um, was set up fairly recently to be a leading technology hospital over in the area. Um, it's got about 150,000 outpatients every year and around 25,000 inpatients, so it's pretty huge. Um, it's a leading technology hospital. It was brought in to make the best of all the newest technologies, but subsequently it was consuming quite a large amount of energy. Build It were brought in to help them to monitor that and to start a process of improving it. Here's what they did. 
They started off, Build It recommended they follow this MAIE process of beginning to measure their energy consumption, analyse it. Here you can see an example of one of the dashboards they used. Um, making improvements, a couple of which are noted there to start with, and then evaluating those projects to really see the ROI on what they were doing. Um, and the idea of that cycle is they wanted them to continue round and round it until they, they really you know, got super hot on everything they were doing from a consumption perspective. So what did they achieve? Well, they've already managed to reduce their overall energy consumption, mostly by reducing their nighttime energy costs by 30%. They've actually only been using the system for six months so far, but they could very quickly identify that there were some really badly wrong things going on overnight. Sure, the hospital still has people in it, but they could turn off a lot of the high-tech machinery that was left on standby. They could switch off um, lights and uh, heating and ventilation in areas that weren't being used and do all of that automatically. Um, they're then due to do full intervention in July when they'll have a full year of data. So they're going to continue around that MAIE cycle yet again and hopefully make more and more improvements. 